Hi, everybody. It's Mary Long here. And uh, tonight is our final uh, oh. virtual paint out and critique um, for the season. We went from March through the end of October, just as we normally would. So uh, I hope everybody has enjoyed it, <laughs> even though we've all been separately painting. So um, anyway, with that, um, I want to turn it over to Steve to talk more about um, what uh, you have planned, Steve. And Great. Great. Thank you, Mary. All right, good. Um, just to start us off, uh, thinking in the right, right frame of mind here, there's a few quotes. Uh, I really like this one from Phil Dyke. You know, a good painting is not because it looks like something, but it because it, but because it, it feels like something. Um, da Vinci also had a good quote on uh, painting is poetry that is seen rather than felt. And poetry is a painting that is felt rather than seen. Um, and of course, Van Gogh, always a good uh, resource for uh, inspiration there. So um, I'd encourage you to read quotes, uh, read books of art and artists, um, keep a, uh, a file of art artists that you really enjoy watching and that really move you uh, and inspire you. Uh, I'm bringing three more artists here. Um, T. Ellen Lawson, which I heard Clayton is a school chum <laughs> from, uh, from the old days. Uh, T. Allen Lawson, uh, his work is uh, really nice. Um, very well graphically designed. Uh, he's making some really good choices on, on big shapes. And um, so look up his, his work there. Uh, for watercolor, Joseph Zabutchek is probably one of the uh, most well-known artists Color. He's from Australia, and um, he's doing also some really amazing work. Um, and Nathan, uh, I posted a, uh, a link to Nathan's uh, video. It's a 17-minute video on, on lighting and, and form. Well worth the, uh, the review. Uh, again, look up his work for uh, big shapes, uh, images that really move you and, and ask why. why. Why is this scene so compelling? Um, is, it, is it the color? Is it the shapes? Is it the lighting? Is it the contrast? And just don't blow over it or, or you know, flip it by, uh, but really, really look at it and dissect it. Um, learn from it, because uh, we'll all, You'll all, you know, grow incrementally the more you do that. Okay, let's get right into the um, into the critique. I'm going to go in in the order that these were posted into Facebook. Um, Kuhn beat us all again. Good job, Kuhn. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, here and I. I Posted the reference photo up here in the upper left corner. Uh, and then I wrote down uh, a few points to consider uh, as, we, as we talk about this. Uh, I'll try to hit maybe one or two minutes per piece. I'll go quickly and uh, we'll wrap this up in uh, hopefully about 8.30. Yeah, in about an hour. Uh, overall, good composition, Kuhn. This is, uh, this is a good U-shaped composition. Uh, I, I would have liked to have seen a, a little more connected um, value down in here to bring this, this darker shape down into this um, mass down in here. Um, watch the purity of this color. It's, it's a little too electric for the shadow. But I like where you're going with this. It's, uh, you know, um, uh, these little dots of blue also might be a little too much. They're a little 
grabbing the eye too much on that. Um, then I have um, the vertical size of the distant shapes makes the scene smaller. What I mean by that is um, really look at the photograph here. This is a, a large, vast distance here in the photograph. Um, I'm not getting that feel in the, in the, in the painting, mm -hmm. mainly because the choices of your shapes in, in the, uh, are, are getting too big, too fat mm -hmm. off in the distance back in here. These, these shapes are super thin, super fine. Uh, if you, if you make those flatter, you're going to gain more distance and, and that depth of, of, uh, okay. of, um, of the, of the environment, the atmosphere back in there. Um, but good choices of, of, of bright color in these, in these fall paintings. You're going to see a lot of fall colors in this, in this one. All right. Good job, Kun. Thank you. Sue. Sue Whitney. Good job, Sue. I really enjoyed this one. Um, same comment I, I just gave to uh, Kuhn about the shapes of the, um, anytime you make a, a, a shape, like a leaf shape in the grass here, um, you're telling us how far that is. And if it's a thick shape here, it's really gonna confuse the viewer that this is thicker than, let's say this shape down here or these bigger shapes. I want bigger leaves down in here and smaller leaves back in here. Are you pointing at something? I can't see you're pointing. Yeah, it's, it's the, uh, oh, let me get a brush uh, here. Okay, can you see down in here? I'm trying to see where you're pointing. Are you pointing can in you a picture? Can you see the, the arrow? No. Okay, let me annotate this. Um, okay, now I can see your arrow. Right in here. Okay, so okay. the leaf points are too big. They read too big for the picture where they are. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, just, just watch those little marks. If they're getting kind of fat, Back here, you're going to blow that illusion of distance. Okay. Okay. Um, but overall, great shapes in the trees. Good, good composition. Uh, watch the sky holes. Uh, I'd say make break them up a little bit more. Get some leaves over over some of these, some of the branches. They, they, they're looking too similar. Okay. Um, and then this gray shape here. I thought this was sky, but it, I'm thinking it, it might be this building back in here. Yeah, it was the building. I really couldn't decide what to do with it. Yeah. I just decided the building looked too distracting. Yeah. It, it's good. Maybe. If you have more detail in there, you know, ask if you really need it. Um, and then, you know, make those choices. Well, I was thinking about putting in just more evergreens back there. Yeah. Maybe not completely full, but mostly. Yeah, that might be a better choice. Thank you. Okay, good. <clears throat> Richard, are you here, Richard? I, uh, I am, Steve. Okay. How are you? Good, good. Great job on this one, Richard. Um, you inspired me. <laughs> thanks. I love the design. I love the offset of this. Uh, pushing it right to the edge, but you know, still giving us a, a nice comfortable area over here. Um, this is beautifully painted right in here. Can you see the cursor? Yes. Okay. Uh, I want everybody to look at, at his shapes, the interlockingness of these shapes um, is really elegantly designed. This is leading down to here, coming down to here, coming down to here. And it's, it's just beautiful, beautiful shapes way back here. Uh, I think you could improve it a little bit 
by this quality of painting down in here. It, it got a little too busy, uh, a little too much detail, but um, overall, this is this yeah. is great. Good job, Steve. Thank you for the advice. I really appreciate it. Um, just just. Again, this is this is going on to on to the third month, November, December, January. This is January um, lesson, but look at how how well uh, Richard did, how simplified he painted this these shadow shapes, and this this totally adds the strength to this painting. Uh, it's it's just gorgeous, gorgeous painting. Thank you. Okay. Yeah. So. Just to take note of that and how how simplicity adds adds value. So we're going to hit up hit on a few of these. Good, good job, Richard. Thank you, Nancy. Great job on this one, Nancy. Thank um, you. I love the angles. Um, if you if you remember back into that little uh, seventeen diagram of Edgar Payne, he had diagonals as one of his compositional design elements and this is this is an excellent example of of that of using diagonals in 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 design mm -hmm. uh, it, it brings energy and and movement uh, certainly to to the uh, to the painting uh, if you're if it looks too flat if your scenes look too flat give it a slight angle or if you want more if you're feeling more energetic, you know, give it a good, nice 45 degree angle. Well, maybe not that much, but uh, you get my point. Uh, good solid trees on this one, Nance. Um, I looked at these colors and I, and I want to talk briefly about this green. I love the placement and how you create these uh, lyrical passages of of color. Um, then I saw this color. Can you use that one? Uh oh, me, you're me... freezing. <laughs> okay. <laughs> okay, now you're back. Okay, let me let me point it out to this color right in here. Um, this one here, that yeah. gray. I would have liked to have seen that gray back in here a little bit more. This might be too um, rich a color for okay. that, how far back that is. Okay. But other than that, um, excellent, excellent job. Thank you. And I did see it sold. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, to the people who's home it was <laughs> i was standing on the riverbank painting the lot next to them and they bought it <laughs> oh great so, thanks. even better <laughs> good sandra sandra good job on this one this is a difficult subject um i love the warm palette you used um good framing on the on the on the trees um I say simplify shapes, uh, capture the roundness, meaning um, the, the flowers themselves, and again, you'll see this on a cloudy day, um, but you, if, if you're painting from a cloudy day, you gotta, you gotta really emphasize the roundness of those shapes even more um, because you're not getting the, the bright light versus the, the shadow side to really define that shape. So your, your shrubs themselves are looking flat. So watch, watch the, uh, the light source. I'm seeing a light source coming in from the left because it's casting a nice shadow on the, on the, on the balcony here. Um, really emphasize some of those shadows uh, would help define those, those plants a little better. Watch the perspective of the frogs. Um, you know, I think I think this one is okay. This one is is slightly bigger, but then this one is a little bit smaller. So it's 
it's the perspective, and Nancy will be talking about perspective. Uh, anytime you have that giving us that clue, if this guy is going to be smaller, it's making the painting appear flatter. So it's you're giving us a little little contrast of uh, conflict of of uh, information. Um, other than that, um, and again, the shadow carrying over into the leaves, I think, would help in that rounding up of those plants uh, a bit more. So, Sharon, uh, great energy on this one, Sharon. Um, again, I, I love your brushwork. Uh, watch when you do those brushworks that uh, you're, you're varying the shapes and sizes of those. Um, those make sure when you put it down, it's, 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 you're leaving that mark with, with confidence and, and, and surety uh, and, and not make, make it definitely different than the last one. So these two are almost the same shape. Uh, it could be a little different. Likewise, these these reeds coming up, I like the breaking of, of it, but it's the increments are are the same. Um, I love the big shape in here, the middle shape in here, and then the smaller shape in here. That's a great example of um, varying the different shapes and sizes all throughout the painting. It's when you get the similar shapes and sizes that your the humanness come out. You know, the architect of you come out comes out. Say, okay, I want I want this all <laughs> lining up. Yeah, I didn't even realize I did that. <laughs> and then the, you know the the sky holes. I call it a sky hole, but it's it's a hole in between the barks of the of the branches. Um, just vary that shape a bit more. But great color. Um, really work on those shapes. Okay, okay thank good. You. Yolana. Hello. This has got um, a, some really good potential. I love the difficult subject. This is a really difficult subject that, that you captured thank here. You. That's difficult. Yolana and um, a sunlit, sun backlit, house uh with with some really nice landscaping um and you did a you did a good job um i love your brushwork big strong confident strokes um but watch the value uh your eyes will deceive you in in just how warm this is uh if if your lightest light is light is is the, the light of the paint, you're going to have to darken in what you think is white to make that light appear brighter. Uh, and I did a layer here just, just to give you an example. Um, I just darkened in the, the, the structure of the house uh, just a little bit. Well, not a lot, not a little bit, but quite a bit so that the light on the shrub right in here is um, is well lit and, and gets so much brighter. Uh, you could do the same thing with the tree and certainly the ground if there is a shadow on this ground. So the story then becomes the light falling on the tree and then the, the house becomes, it's there but it becomes secondary. Um, and you could, you know, kind of play with that either a, as a glaze or um, uh, once this dries, you could, you could play with that. But um, good job overall. Thank you. Clayton. Hi, Steve. I really enjoy this one, Clayton. Um, I love the super subtle angle uh, that you, you gave us. Uh, and again, this is a, a really nice design. Um, look at the 
those, I'd say the, um, the design of the shapes, uh, this ground plane here versus the upright plane of the trees. Uh, certainly has given us more, a little more ground than a little less tree, but it's, it's elegantly designed in a way that it's, uh, it's not boring at all. Um, look at the, uh, I love the subtleness of your, your um, color variations using the same value, but slightly different color variations to give us really different shapes that, that give, give music to this, to this, uh, this yard. Um, and then of course the warmth of that tree is, is just incredible. Um, love your sky holes, man. I, it's just it's rock solid. That, that took all the time. <laughs> <laughs> Again, variations of, of edges uh, from sharp to lost and found edges are all over the place. There is not one shape that is the same in any of this. Um, I call this co big continents and little islands of, of shapes. Uh, and this is a great example of that. My only concern is, is the darkness of this shape right in the distance. Uh, it's given me, you know, it looks like a, certainly it is a, like a garage door or a structure. Um, I want to go there and you, you're giving me like little breaks of maybe not go there just yet, you know, just kind of enjoy that, that tree a little bit more. Uh, and again, good placement of the, of the ducks too. I got lucky. They actually wandered in. They didn't <laughs> arrange themselves so nicely, but, uh, it actually happened and I figure when, why not? God's telling me something. Yeah. <laughs> Good job. Well, if anybody takes anything out of this, uh, look at look at the variations of his sky holes on this one, and then is the way he um, varied the color but kept the value the same. It's that's one one trick one trick you guys can learn from this one. Thanks job, so much, lady. Barbara. Great job on this nocturne, Barbara. This is, this is not easy. Um, overall, good warmth on this, this one. Um, I, I would have, just, just my, my take on it, I would have put this little stop sign in right up in here, the corner. I really struggled with that. I didn't know. I, I, I thought I would, and then I thought, no, I won't. <laughs> yeah, that, that'll add, that would have added a, a nice framing on this end. Uh -huh. um, watch, watch when uh, you're, again, perspective on the cars. Uh -huh. um, yeah. This one looks like it's pulling out, but then it's, it's slightly twisted. Um, so that, that kind of gives it kind of a wonky feel. Um, and then the reflections um, oh. certainly should line up with the uh, with the light, mm -hmm. uh, not so much the tires. Um, good one on this one. This one is well done, and and then of course this one. I I also want to bring up some guides. Um, can you see the guides? Yes, I can. Okay. Uh, one quick lesson on um people if you're if they're walking if you're standing up um painting this which i'm assuming you are mm -hmm. all the people's eyes are going to be lined up for the most part you're, you're going to get some children of course that are going to be a little bit lower but all the eyes are going to be lined up on the horizon and here's your horizon line because okay Okay, so if you if you were to put a person right here, their head is going to be right here, and their eyeballs are going to be on that blue line, uh -huh. and their body is going to be down in here. Uh, okay. so, so it's making this person a bit a little bit shorter. Um, 
That's one technique that you can use. I never realized, I never associated the lot, the uh, eyes with the horizon line. Yeah, the, so, so yeah. Any, any person that you put over here, they're gonna line up their head and their eyeballs are gonna line up on that line. Okay. Okay, just keep that in mind. Um, but other than that, it's, it's, uh, it's a good, good painting. Thank you. Karen, let me get rid of these guides. Great color on this one, Karen. I love your greens. Um, you have good variety of greens uh, from cools to, to lights, uh, to warms, to darks. Um, say the shapes could be stronger, uh, not so much the, the dark shapes, but your light shapes. Um, I think you, you went to painting individual leaves too soon rather than finding the shape that those, that cluster of leaves make up. Um, that's one of the, um, um, I guess, uh, handicaps of, of plein air painter. You go out there and you're painting quickly and you want to put all that detail in. Um, hold back a little bit and really look at the shape of that tree first, get that in and then come in and put your little details in just where it needs it. You don't need to put every little leaf on. Um, get, that, get that overall shape in first uh, and then watch the sameness of these, these darks uh, right in here. Get a little more variety in there. Uh, if you start feeling that like it's the same, you know, move that tree over a little bit and then bring it on the other tree down. Um, and then certainly define your center of interest. My eye goes up in here into these light leaves and then it, it travels down in here and then comes down here and I'm not really settling in on, on a certain location. Um, Certainly traveling through the painting is good. Um, but I'd, I'd like to have something a little bit more to, to hone in on. Other than that, it's, it's a good piece, Karen. Anne. Hi, Steve. Hi. Elegant piece in here. This is, uh, and I've watched you paint in, in a workshop, so I... I <laughs> You have a, a really soft touch with foliage, and it's it's really nice to see. Um, clearly, the, the the center of interest is this super warm tree right in here. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But my eye keeps going down to this arrow. Um, watch the arrows in your painting. Um, they will always point the way we should look. And I don't think you wanted this, you know, my eye to live down here in this arrow. No. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, it's it's there in the photograph, but it's super mm -hmm. subtle, you know. Mm -hmm. and it's mm -hmm. just a real quick fix of just darkening that ground plane a little bit, mm -hmm. uh, deepening the shadow on that on this base of this this tree. Mm -hmm. um, gave us a nice nice angle coming off and then, but you bring us back with these branches. Uh, that's nicely well done. Um, you could, you know, the tr the photograph itself has, has a nice cutoff in here. Mm -hmm. I was thinking it would be, it would be okay to, to bring in, in that, but mm -hmm. I like mm -hmm. the openness you have it. You've created it to be more open and, and that, that's, that's fine too. Um, watch, watch the, the sky holes back in here. They're getting kind of gray. Mm -hmm. uh, I think the paint's getting a little muddy. Mm -hmm. uh, try to get that as clean as the sky back in here in certain mm -hmm. areas, not, not everywhere. Cause it, it is, uh, um, I think that's sky hole or it could just be more trees. Um, yeah. It's vague trees in the background, lower down. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And then anytime you have a person, is this a person or? Mm, 
No, I'll tell you a story about this painting. I forgot my brushes. So the basic lay-in, I picked up sticks from the ground. No way. <laughs> <laughs> So it got a little dark. <laughs> oh, the, for, for stick painting, this is a <laughs> great lesson, though. Oh, my gosh. Good job, Ann, for stick painting. Oh, what a story. Shannon. Are you here, Shannon? Shannon, this is... Um, this looks like a Stard's Rock scene or Matheson's uh, Star. Matheson's. It's Matheson's, yeah. Is it? Yeah, okay. yeah. Good eye. <laughs> uh, beautiful, beautiful uh, photo you took there. Um, overall, really good big shapes, uh, big, good distribution of light, middle value, and, and the dark down in here. I think your your center of interest is this is this little trickle that's coming out. It's 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 something you know. It's got the greatest contrast between the light and dark. Um, but use your darks a little more sparingly. Mm -hmm. uh, I think you you might go too dark too fast. I would I would and I'm giving you a little challenge over here. Mm -hmm. I would try to do a painting. Um, with your darkest dark is, you know, if, t if, if this is a 10 right in here, this is, you know, black, you know, go, try to go to eight as your darkest dark and, and save those real, dark, you know, th so this would be like an eight right in here. Um, and then paint in those, in that middle value. Uh, mm -hmm. You're really good at the light in the, in, in those, in the darks, you know, you're not afraid to use the darks. Uh, work on those middle values a little bit more, and I think, and save those darks for the last uh, last little bit. Okay, okay, I will try that. Open this up. You know, the the darker this this gets back in here, uh, it it really comes forward. Mm -hmm. uh, mm -hmm. If if you if you get it lighter. Get a little more atmosphere, or uh, um, I don't say glazing. What what'd you call that, uh, Clayton? Um, instead of glazing, it's lightning. Scumbling. Scumbling. <laughs> that light lighting uh, lightning up of the uh, of the space back there. Get a little more air in there because that's a beautiful photo. Good job, though. Did you do this uh, in plain air or off the? Oh uh, yeah, this is plain air. It's about an hour and a half. Okay. What a what a nice location, though. Yeah, yeah, it's real. It was really pretty. Great light. We might use this photo. If is it possible to use this photo as as one of our exercises? Sure. Feel uh, free. Okay. Good. Elizabeth. Now, where is this, Elizabeth? Hello. Uh, it's the Isle of Skye. Isle of Skye. In Scotland. We were on a hike. It sort of, there doesn't, it was any, I think we passed two people and the entire oh. sort of like, you know, round sort of trip, but it was beautiful. It was one of the sunny days that we had. It's sort of. Good. Right off the bat, I love, and everybody should look at this, how your greens are just super cool and light back in here getting warmer and warmer and warmer and then and then you hit us with the you know the nice little animals down in here um I, i'm gonna say you know that's that's what i really like about it uh you did a really good job on that um i like the composition more in the photograph of sky and land and water ratio mm, okay. uh, if this is all about the land and the sky and the water um, have less sky. You know, give oh, us okay. more, give us more earth to look at. So you would actually include more of that foreground. It's a, yes. Yeah. Yeah, and and like I said on on the on Coons, um, the further you go back here, the flatter those elements are going to be. Mm -hmm. uh, you're not going to get these big rounding shapes mm. 
you're going to get those the certainly the the vertical cliffs, but everything is going to get really flat back in here, and that flatness really pushes the scene uh, back. Mm -hmm. uh, the minute you start getting vertical elements, mm -hmm. thicker elements back in here, the flatter that painting looks. Oh, so. Okay. Uh, and then a, a word about the animals. Um, yeah, I wasn't really sure about the animals. <laughs> less, I, and I say less is always more. Oh, okay. uh, look at, go back and look at Clayton's, the way he handled the, the ducks in mm -hmm. that. It was implied. Mm -hmm. uh, you don't want to overdo it. You want them to blend into that, um, into that landscape. Um, and um and allow you know we know what a, a you know this is this is better mm -hmm. this one is better um we know what animals look like uh we don't need to see their eyes and those mm. little tail and everything so less is 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 better yeah and i guess if i had more of the foreground in the front then those sheep would be pushed back anyway so they'd all become yeah. a lot smaller yes so, yeah yeah, and 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 whenever I do an animal, I'll I'll say okay. And I, you know, I, I don't I don't like doing animals, so I'll say okay. <laughs> what? How many strokes of a brush can I invest in painting this? And if I could do it in three, I'm only going to put three in there. Mm. Uh, put three strokes, and then if you need to carve back in. The negative space to redefine it or soften an edge do that and then move on you mm -hmm. know um, but overall really good good photo reference for a really good subject thank you good job dorothy uh i love the warmth of your palette hello hi um watch the curve of this 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 uh, path, it's, it's again, this is an, a nice big arrow that's bringing us right out the end here. Even this, uh, this tree is being pulled by gravity, just sucking us right off the left, left side. Um, watch that um, design element. Um, I think you could easily solve this by just giving us a nice, softer horizontal um that okay kind of that's right in between this tree it's kind of like like this way more back flat in here. yeah okay uh and then and then the path i'm thinking may, well, maybe maybe by connecting up this path but but then you know um but i think it's just a flat horizontal I'll just kind of correct that okay and then give us give us an exit of this path over here okay out on the other side and then watch watch you know using the edging of edges of the canvas as a design um you know i heard somewhere where the you know these four edges are your biggest design in in the in the, in the painting itself so uh as soon as you touch that edge with a point, that's another arrow, a little, another little tangent. Either come way down or go off on that mm -hmm. um, on that design, like you did on this side, right in here. Um, overall, it's it's uh, again. I love the color. Uh, watch the shape of these rhythmic uh, trees back in here too. Get that variation going for you. Okay, Howard. Hi, Steve. Hi. This is at the sculpture park. Is it yes, not? yes, it, yeah. And I felt obligated, if I was asked there, I felt obligated to paint the sculptures. You guys are troopers. <laughs> I know a, a bunch of you went out there. To, it was pretty, pretty nippy out there, wasn't it? It was fine. Uh, look at, I love your definition, your, your, um, 
the the uh, shape. What do you call that? Um, it'll come to me. Scrub the size of your shapes. Let's <laughs> say the light of the sky is your smallest shape. This is your medium shape, and then your big shape is right down in here. Um, ask yourself: Do you need? You know, if if you're really interested in this in this sculpture here, do you really need this one? Um, if this is the, the main story, what can you, do you really even need this one? If it's in the scene, uh, it's your choice to put it in or not. I don't think you need it. Um, it's not adding to this other than just adding more an interesting shape that's back there. I think a tree branch or you know a shape shape of a tree that would frame this element might be better um, but it's uh I like the uh this shape you how you use this shape to kind of connect the two this the scrub um, and then you know watch watch the leaves these are you know, the leaves are, are, should be real tiny back in here, nice big ones back in here. Again, that, that'll force that, that perspective that you're, you're creating. Good job. That's a, that's a nice watercolor. It's, watercolors are hard to do outside. Well, thank you. Good. Lori. Hi. Beautiful composition, Lori, on this one. Um, Nice, you know, lower third on the right. Uh, my eye is just leading to this area right in here, and it's just living really nicely right in here. Uh, I'm exploring out in here. Watch the sharp edge up in here. That's that's calling me up there, uh, where I want to live down in here. Um, but other than that, great, nice L composition kind of framing element in here um, and again watch watch the closeness of that painting you know, this less less in the sky over here um, Could you say that again Steve you froze a second watch watch the tree shape going right up to the edge of that canvas um, and then bring, I would make that tree a little bit bigger so it goes off the canvas. Good, good paint, good brushwork. Um, coming along really, really nicely, Ari. Thanks. I have a question. Should I have made, like in the photograph, the shadow larger at the bottom? Um, yeah, this is, this is kind of flat right in here. You, you could come in a little a little bit taller you know get get a little more angle in here um, but not much not much and I like your the leaves in the shadow even too um, those are those are well those read well yeah I'll just work, on the, the work on those how, trees how big of, how big of a pieces is this? Um, nine by 12. Okay. Good. And how long did it take you? If you mind. Yeah. Um, um, how long did it take me? It took me a couple of hours. Okay. I didn't, I was keeping you in mind and, and staying away from detail and <laughs> just trying to get those colors down and keep the shapes and not overdo it and not overdo the sky holes. And I just kept trying to think block of color, block of color, block of color. And yep. that helped. Good, 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 good. And, and I love you kept this as the center of interest right in here. You gave us the, the hardest edge, the lightest light, the brightest color, uh, the active brushwork. All these are, are really good tools that you know, I'll, I'll talk more about in the months ahead, but um, good job. Tom. Hey, Steve, we meet again. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I, 
I'm going to mute because my son, the drummer, is practicing. But oh, okay. Uh, I feel this one is is um, extremely compelling. I looked at this for a while, and you know, I, I kept feeling connected to it, uh, and then I I kept finding these hidden connections to it. Uh, I love your palette. Uh, this is deep yellow orange uh, mixed in with the greens and the, and the burnt siennas and then you you hit us with this this nice purple lavender um, grays and then you brought that up into the sky um, very intriguing um, I love the the again the high contrast between the, the the structure and the tree. It gets super lost back in here. It almost looks like a little hut. That's just. But then you gave us a little hint of of a roof, a few more windows, and you got to really look for it. So it's it's, and and again, everybody should really look at Tom Skyholes and how he does this. Uh, this is beautifully done on his tree. I tell you, I keep looking at Carlson and his essay on trees, which is an yeah. amazing piece of writing. Oh, um, yeah. yeah. And I look at um, uh, Chauncey Foster Ryder and his unbelievable trees. And I keep trying to do it. And I, it, I feel like I'm slowly making progress. But boy, is that a, an art, <laughs> for, for lack of another word. So thank you for that comment. I'm going to have to look up this Chauncey Froster writer. I oh, my God. R-Y-D-E-R. R-Y-D-E-R. So, okay. So beautiful. Early. He's passed away long ago, but um, American landscape painter. Yeah. Good. Good. And God bless you for your uh, drummer. Oh, my God. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> All right. Good job, Tom. Keep painting, man. Thanks a lot. I will. Julie, really nice watercolor in this one, Julie. Um, I love the the warmth that you have in the center of interest right in here. It's leading us quite nicely down this path. Um, watch the lightness shapes back in here. Again, those are getting, gonna get flatter and smaller as, as you get further and further away. Um, that'll help push push that those shapes back. And then don't be afraid of of your darks getting some dark in the foreground in here. That's, that'll really lighten that up. And then watch your, uh, the sky holes. Um, they, need, they need to have a little bit of uh, either branches coming through or leaves uh, intertwining in there. They're looking um, a, a little like a Dalmatian. Um, spots. So, were those opaque put on afterwards? Yes, I I was trying to kind of reclaim them, and I really struggled. As as soon as you put those on, uh, let that dry, and then just come in with with wash again, and just soften up some of those edges. Okay. Be amazed okay. at how how much those things disappear. Um, you know, and get a few branches coming in and paint right over that opaque. Right. It's totally legal. As long as you're not submitting it to the Transparent Watercolor Society, you know. Um, good job. This, this photo, I love this photo. This might be another photo we might use for, um, if that's okay, for that's the, the lessons next month good cynthia i love your brushwork girl it's uh hello hi <laughs> thanks for doing all the uh oh i lost you thanks for doing all the um emailing i, I haven't hardly started <laughs> keeping us keep, uh, keeping us cats in line uh, great palette uh, very limited colors that you used. Um, a little bit of warmth here and there. That's fine. Watch this this shape here. 
uh, it's, it's, I love the, the perspective of this bridge and the reflection. I don't know what this is. This, you see that? that uh, yeah, that was um, the land where the land met uh, the, I was standing there with my easel. That's okay. where the land meets the whatever. Water. Water. <laughs> Yeah, and it had a it it had a very purplish, uh, I don't know. Yeah, I, I, you know it's a strong design element. You got you got a nice land shape here. I wanted to kind of go parallel, more par parallel with with this bank. Uh, maybe just lessening that up a little bit. Uh, you know, certainly the edges, or uh, you know, bring some of that water back down in here element because the story is all about this bridge and um and your your freedom to put that paint on is is just incredible i love it thank you uh, so i agree with you on the reflection after i uh you know was packing up and going away um i felt that the lines in the reflection were too strong um, I just haven't gone back to correct them. Okay. I I think they're okay. Uh, I like the negative painting that you, you're doing in here um, of the light, bringing the light back in. Uh-huh. Um, and it's certainly, you know, it's certainly quiet, more quieter than, than reality up in here. Um, and I like, I even like the, the, the atmosphere you got back in here. Watch these globs of paint. You know, you're gonna get yourself in trouble if, if you let that dry and if it's too thick, you know, it's uh -huh. you're gonna be scraping that off. Scrape it off. <laughs> yeah. yeah, it's okay to have the, the big globs back in here, but if, if this is, you know, um, representing that distant fog area um, yeah i see all right thank you good job good thank job. you very much okay robin here i am <laughs> i get this whimsical feeling about this one um you know, I love how you, you just kind of gave us this ethereal framing around it in this, in this square format. Um, watch, again, watch the, the light dark shadows, uh, the, the shapes falling on this, on this creature is um, really def definitive of, of the shape and the light that you have it. You painted this as if it was a cloudy day. Yes. But, um, the photo that you have is 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 super bright, um, or or in shade, certainly. So his 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 legs can be you know certainly be warmed up because there's this warmth of this uh, pot should be really really affecting the shadow in this in this in his legs and then the the warm warmer light um you know get some of this warm light that you have on the outside here really falling in on him so just warm up the light parts of him and then mm -hmm. you know get some warmth down in here in his legs and this thing will really pop yeah, I think I got so involved with trying to do the anatomy because I haven't painted a figure in a long time that I just, I kind of, you know, said, okay, I finally got the figure somewhat believable and I give up and then Ugh. I just left the background <laughs> and, and closed the door. But <laughs> well, not, the background's not that bad. It's, yeah. it's, it's got some good shapes, you know, good, good variety of, of things. Um, but, you know, he's your he's your center of focus and you know you gotta nail him yeah okay maybe yeah, if, if you let this dry 
try glazing, uh, you know, some warm glazes uh, in the shadows and then, and then hitting that with some light, light parts just to pick that up. Oh, yeah, okay. I know he needs a lot of finishing. Yeah. Yeah. Good job, though. Right. Thank you. Kim. Good seeing you here, Kim. Thank you. you uh, I love the, the connections. I get the word connections when I see any kind of bridge. Uh, it's connecting, again, two bodies of land over water or road. Um, I would spend a little more time in opening up this, um, this structure. Um, it looks like it's just this um, um, really tightly knit uh, bridge. And I, I would like to see openings in here a little bit more. Yeah, it's changed already. <laughs> oh, is it? <laughs> yes, it's. this is probably two or three times now. So I'm going to oh, okay. probably ask you for a little more help after. But okay. yeah, I kept, I was going back and forth because pretty much I finished it all there and then trying to just get that bridge done. Yeah. I love, I love the, the whimsical shapes that you made back in here of the trees. Uh, watch this straight line. You probably change that, but, and then watch the, um, uh, the stepping stones of these, these shapes up in here. I'm not sure what those are. And I don't have a better picture either. I wish, yeah, okay. you know, from that day, so. Good, I love the reflections though. That really works well on that hard edge of the, of the land back in there. Good job. Thank you. Patricia, I said wow when I saw this one. <laughs> oh, wow, thank you. <laughs> Super bright. Uh, you have no trouble with with laying that bright color in, uh, and I love how you just simplified the the house background with this nice cool gray. Um, the thing that would help this would be your shade and shadow shapes within the tree itself. Uh, you have them here, and certainly on this whole right side is is in shade um but it's it's losing it i want more definition of of these shapes these shadow shapes the shadow shapes up in the tree okay. Okay. i have those when, at one point how do you you know you're painting along and everything's changing as you're painting <laughs> yeah and i went back in the second time and added all those shadow shapes and then somehow i ended up back with like I had all of this in here, you know, the lower part where the chime is, all that oh, yeah. shape, but it was up higher also. Okay. And you keep painting along and all of a sudden it's like it's gone. <laughs> yeah. It's, and it's, this works when you're doing trees. You're, you're, you're so excited about putting the detail on, on those highlights yeah. that they grow and they just eat your shadows up. Um, <laughs> So you got to be really disciplined on, on maintaining those shadows first and then coming in with just enough light, knowing that this is the front of the tree that's closest to you. Mm -hmm. So that should get the hardest edge, the brightest bright up against the, the lightest light and the darkest dark. And it's usually the dark of the, of the wood that's within that, that tr center of that tree. Okay. And then your shapes are going to get smaller and squishier as it's coming around the side here. And I think we're getting a blowout on the on the machine over here on this side. But yeah, overall, really good. Good job. Thank you. Thank you very much. Mark. Steve. We've got uh, only one, two, three, four more. Good job, Mark, on this one. Um, I mentioned uh, Clay on Clayton's that, you know, he had a like a 50-50, 60-40 split on land, the tree mass. Uh, this is almost 50-50 of land 
to sky and water mass. Mm -hmm. um, watch that. Uh, I would favor one over the other. Go to go to like a 60-40, 70-30 even uh, ratio. Because um, I'm not sure what you want. Is this a sky painting or a land painting? Mm -hmm. I think it's a land painting. Um, so give us a little bit more land, less sky, less water. I think the, uh, and then the light that you have on this slope is really confusing because of, of the lightness that it is. Uh, I think the trees need to have the, that light because the sunlight's coming in from the right, right? And it's, it's kind of raking over this land, creating nice shadows over here. Um, so your shadows need to be darker. This slope needs to be a little bit darker. Um, but I love your darks in here. Uh, and then this, these, the way you treated these trees in the background are really nice. They, they stay back. There's no darks in here that are this dark. Um, so they're, they stay put, you know, way back there. Um, but watch, watch the, the contrast between here. Right now, my eye goes right in here. You see that cursor? Because mm -hmm. that's the lightest light and the darkest dark right there. Uh, and then it comes down here to this nice warm patch. And then I see the nice hot patches in the rock down in here. Um, and I just kind of keep going around. But um, Okay. Uh, this doesn't read as a shadow. This this shape right in here could be, you know, glazed over. Is this acrylic or oil? It's oil. I was, okay. yeah, the sun was setting over the uh, hill on my right. And it was oh, just yeah. picking up the edge of that uh, where it drops off. Yeah. Before it set. So it was really like I was flying trying to catch it. Yeah. <laughs> so. And then, so oh, the, yes, I could see light that in grass shape. Um, you want to capture that light, but uh, less, in this case, less would be more. It's a solid enough shape that you don't have to put, a, put that highlight on there. Okay. Okay. Thank you. Good. Deborah. Deborah, are you here? Okay. Very nicely, uh, nice shapes in this, Deborah. Uh, you've got some good warm greens, some nice cool greens up in here. Uh, the light in this is uh, coming directly from the left. It's just kind of blowing out this whole shape of, uh, of the house. Um, I think you're, if you darken in this, this house shape, this will, all this light will read so much better. Um, and I did do a, a shape here where I just turned off the light on this house. And just look at the light now that's just shining in those trees that I think the, uh, the photo kind of represents. So, um, you could try just throwing a nice wash on that house and, and just calling it a day. Um, but good job on that one. Let's go into Linda. Linda, are you here? Hey, Steve. Yes. Hi. Hi. I love this, Linda. You've, I love the, the misty feel to this. Uh, of the background, middle ground, and foreground shapes. Uh, is this a, uh, just a, a tonal study? Yes, but I actually wanted to go paint the gorgeous colors, but I have one arm in a cast and with one hand, I just couldn't yeah. negotiate um, uh, the different paint colors, so I did. 
<laughs> I kind yeah. of went a whole different direction. Um, I tried watercolor last week thinking that's one easier to do one-handed and that didn't work out. Oh, so I'm just trying to figure out how to do one-handed painting. Wow, what's happening to you and Anne? <laughs> oh, Anne too? No, Anne is, Anne is painting with sticks. Oh, right, right. <laughs> All you need to do is lose your brushes and paint with sticks <laughs> with one hand. <laughs> oh, no. Well, I love this. Uh, you've captured the mood. Uh, if you leave it just the way it is, I think that's fine. I think to improve it, maybe, maybe to create a nice uh, defining shape for these shadows a little bit more. Um, what do you suggest? Because I really struggled. I kept redoing that. The, the shadows, you know, the light's coming from the right, and there were right. shadows from that I really changed. Yeah, that you didn't want here. But then um, definitely get a little more definition on the shadows. You have it here. It mm -hmm. could just be a little darker. And then maybe, maybe shapes coming out further um kind of in the in the foreground over here kind of like this you don't have to put that shadow in um and then just kind of blank that shadow out as it goes back into the distance um i love the angle that you gave it a little more dramatic you know see see how beautiful that subtle angle um i would I would also, you know, don't diminish the shapes that are back in here to give you even a little bit more depth, more than you have it. Um, so the value that you have back in here, this is your lightest light, right? Uh -huh. this is your next level here. Just try to find something in between and just create little shapes that give us some, a little a little more shape of uh, light that could be back in here that opens that up a little bit more. So more light instead of dark to... Define. A little more light, yeah, like your negative painting around these tree trunks. Okay. But in a, in a shape that just tells us that there's something back there. Kind of, if, if you go back to Nancy's, Nancy Mertz's um, painting, how she just indicated little lines of light behind the trees. Uh, okay. it's, yeah. it's, it's like, um, if you listen to music or classical music, it's, it's like a super subtle note that kind of strings along. It's, it's under, under the radar. You gotta really look for it. And if it's just a shade lighter than this, uh, and if it creates a pattern, um the eye will complete that and you'll create a, a whole nother layer that's super far back there okay okay good job one one-handed too thanks so much steve andrea i love this one andrea this this reminds me of stained glass your your paintings are, are looking so spiritual. <laughs> it's incredible. Oh, hi. hi. This is uh, this is like the tree of life. It's it's oh, it's a it's incredible it's an incredible tree oh. out our way. I, don't be surprised if I try to work it up into all the different seasons of the year. Yeah, this is what it does. <laughs> now, it's I a would, sounding tree. It's a would, uh, white oak that's survived over 150 years out here. Oh my goodness. It's an incredible history. <laughs> well, you, you nailed it. Um, watch it. Watch out for the standout shapes. I call it standout shapes in here. Um, one of these standout shapes is this, this guy right in here. Do you see him? Yes, yes. Um, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna, to, on a layer, I got, an, I got a layer here. Um, I'm going to sample that color. And I'm just gonna throw in just a, a, a few hints of shapes just to connect that shape up to that shape and maybe up to this shape. And then maybe down in here. 
it's just now if you look at it now it's connecting that shape up to that it, it's, it's got a standalone i'm not seeing your uh, move steve oh you don't you don't see that no uh oh i can't see it i saw it but uh you need to go over it oh uh, let me turn it off Brothers. and on you see that yes okay so it's just it's just connecting that shape up to that shape and and it's just giving us a little hint and likewise you could do the same thing with um giving us a little more definition on the um in this background here you know you could create little um like a little grove of trees back in here just by connecting up these shapes um, you know a little bit more uh, of their um, kind of stained glass look and even back into here you've got some great shapes up in here uh, don't lose that you know just keep going with the shapes making shapes okay I appreciate the tip for fine-tuning and yeah. harmonizing it more thank you it's harmonizing and it's it's just just like Linda's, uh, the previous one on Linda's, just subtly changing those those colors and values a little bit, and then just really defining these areas and giving us some interest in this in this background area a little bit. You have enough leverage in this tree, you know, leverage meaning the dark of the tree trunk versus the light to really give us super subtle painting back in here. Okay. Okay, sounds good. Thank you, Steve. Great job. Wow, great job, everybody. <laughs>